on guys so today we're going to be going through the maintenance on a Kubota BX mower deck I'm going to walk you guys through here step by step as I go through all the maintenance items on this deck um, I haven't done the maintenance on this in a couple years now so I definitely got to go through it really good this year I've already ordered the parts so I will show you guys that in a moment and uh, I just want to walk you guys through before we get into it kind of explaining real quick what items you want to look for the high maintenance items items that you may be replacing sooner than later along with a couple other things that you may want to keep your eye out for when you're going over your mower deck this spring so let me get you guys down off of the tripod there I'll give you a little bit of closer look and I'll show you guys what we're gonna be doing today all right guys, well here is my 60 inch mower deck. I wanna say it's probably got around 450 hours on it because my tractor is getting pretty close there to 900 hours now. Everything on this deck is fully original from the drive belt to the guide wheels and even the mower blades. So that's why we're finally gonna be refreshing this thing today and breathe a little bit of new life into it. First thing I wanna go over with you guys real quick is just your general maintenance items, the things you're gonna wanna go over before you go to the Kubota dealer and order your parts. Um, so number one would be your belt. Go ahead and get a good look at your belt and see if you have any splitting or any cracking. As you can see on my belt, I've got some massive cracks here and I've even got a couple holes in it where I think stones have gotten in between the ribs and punctured holes through it. Right here you can see there's another good crack. Um, I've got cracks like this all over this belt as well as a lot of dry rotting as well. You can see on the back side here, it looks pretty rough too. So if you got any kind of signs like that, just go ahead and replace the belt. The belt costs about 100 to $120 from your local Kubota dealer. So um, it's really not too bad for a belt. I've seen these double rib belts like this go for a lot more. So once you've had a good look at your belt, the next thing you wanna do is check out your pulleys. You're gonna wanna spin your pulleys around and make sure that you've got no debris or rust or stones in the notches of the pulley and make sure it's smooth as well. Sometimes you could take some scotch bright and rub it on the inside of here and spin it around just to kind of shine this up and get rid of the surface rust which I actually do have some surface rust in mine so that's something I may do before we put the new belt on um, so check all your pulleys over make sure they're all looking good definitely check over your idler right here because this one's gonna be doing quite a bit of work and it doesn't have as hefty of bearings as your spindles do here so you're gonna want to shake it side to side and just make sure you got no play in it make sure when you spin all these pulleys that all your bearings sound good and they don't have any kind of growling noises to them another thing you want to look at is your drive shaft make sure the u joints and your drive shaft spin freely Make sure they move back and forth. So I just kind of grab the drive shaft and turn it side to side to make sure that I don't have any play in my U-joints here. So I've already done that and my drive shaft bearings are good. Another thing you want to check out is the seals on your gearbox. Now most of the seals I see on these gearboxes, they do have dry rotting. I don't know if it's the type of rubber that Kubota is using on these seals or if it's just from the heat from the gearbox or being out in the sun, but a lot of these I see are dry rotted, even ones with lower hours on it. So I wouldn't be necessarily um, scared if you start seeing some dry rotting because mine's been like this for a while and as you can see, I have no leaks. But you're gonna wanna make sure that you have no leaks around the seal and if you do, you're gonna wanna replace it. And then once all that is good, obviously you wanna go over your hardware, just make sure nothing is missing. Um, check over your spring, make sure your spring isn't cracked and that is the spring for the tensioner. Next, you wanna go through and check all of your guide wheels out. Um, as you can see, my guide wheels are really worn out. So if I get down here and move it up and down, you can see just how much movement I have in these guide wheels. So they are worn right out. And if I try to put grease in them, the grease just ends up spilling out both ends of this and it doesn't retain any grease whatsoever. So I'm gonna get rid of these. Plus with them being so sloppy and loose, it's just not gonna allow your deck to ride and mow as well. So definitely a good thing to check. Um, since mine are worn out, I'm just gonna go ahead and replace all of them. There's five all together. You've got one on each corner and then you've got one here in the center. Typically the center one here takes a lot less abuse because it's underneath the tractor and it's a bit more protected versus the ones on the outsides that are always getting hit on stumps and roots. So typically this one's gonna be in good shape, but if you gotta replace one guide wheel, you're better off just replacing them all. That way you can make sure that they're all at the same exact height, that they're all tight and that your deck is gonna mow nice level and even. Another good thing to look at is these mounts right here for the guide wheels. I've seen on form sites and on Facebook, a lot of guys crack these mounts. So you're gonna wanna keep an eye out for any kind of cracking that's here, maybe paint that's chipping away to give you an indicator that this mount is on its way out. So give them a good look over and make sure that they're nice and straight. As you can see, mine look nice and healthy. My welds look good. There's no cracking around it and no paint chipping. So the mounts are definitely in good shape. Uh, the front mounts are gonna take a lot more abuse than the back ones because they're not constantly getting that impact from driving forward like the front mounts do. Aside from that, I think that just about covers it. Obviously, like I said, just make sure you check your bearings, your hardware, all the smaller stuff. And once you're satisfied and you got a nice little list of what you need, go to the Kubota dealer and order your parts. I just picked up my parts this weekend and over here, this is what I've got. As you can see here, we've got a brand new drive belt. So 
that's good. I want to get a Kubota genuine belt because the original one lasted as long as it did. I don't want to take a chance of some Chinese knockoff. We've got five new guide wheels right here. All these are genuine Kubota as well. And you can see here, they've got the grease fittings in them. I know there is some aftermarket companies that make these, but they do not have the grease fittings. Um, so I would definitely stick to Kubota with this as well. And then here, as you can see, I've got three new deck blades because mine were original. So it's definitely time to get them replaced because I've grown them down a lot and uh, so did the previous owner. So they're just at the point now where there's no amount of sharpening you can do with them to make them really cut that well. So um, also we've got some gear oil here, as you can see, uh, this is 8090 weight. Uh, make sure you get a GL5 oil. You should only need one quart for the gearbox, so we'll be changing the fluid on that. The manual calls for 90 weight. Most people use 8090, and uh, like I said, just make sure it's GL5 compatible. Last but not least, I've got two grease guns here. Um, one is running Lucas Red and Tacky. It's a bearing grease, so I'm going to use this on all of my bearings. And then I also have Lucas Mining and Construction Grease. This is a Molly grease in this one, and I'm going to be using this for all the high-pressure pin areas. All the joints with pins and bushings are going to get the Molly grease. Um, so that's why I've got two grease guns here and I will show you which ones I use where because you don't want to use the wrong grease especially in your spindles because if you do the heat generated from these spindles can actually coagulate the grease and get it all clumped up in there so using the correct grease is very important especially with the spindles but now that we got all that out of the way let's go ahead and just dive right into this the first thing I'm going to be doing is removing the belt so to remove this belt we got to remove this side bracket right here these are 19 millimeter bolts so we've got four of them, we've got two here and one on each side here. Once this bracket comes out, we'll be able to slide this belt out and get it completely out of the way so we can better check and sand our pulleys. All right, so I've got a 19 millimeter socket on my half inch impact gun. Go ahead and zip these two top bolts off first. And we got two more on the bottom here. Now we can give this bracket a nice little bump. Loosen it up a little bit and it just slides right off there. Okay, so now that we've got the bracket out of the way, as you can see, we can get the belt right around the gearbox there and pull it up and out of the way. Okay, so now with the belt out of the way, you guys can get a little bit better look at the pulleys and you can kind of see the surface rust that I got going on in here from it sitting all winter long. So what I'm gonna do there is got a scotch brake pad. I'm just gonna throw it in the groove of the pulley until we've got a nice, clean, smooth shine on the inside of these pulleys. Okay, so now we've got our belt off, we've got our pulleys all cleaned up. So now what we're gonna do is drain the gearbox. So to do that, I've cut a little bottle. This is what I normally do. I usually take a pop bottle, cut it in half, and that way you could stick it under the drain bolt here because the drain bolt is pretty low to the top of the mower deck itself. This lower bolt right here, this is the drain bolt, and this upper one here is the check bolt. So you'll be pulling this one out when you fill it, and once you see fluid start to come out of this upper hole, you will then cap it and you'll know it's full. Um, this one up here, this is a 22 millimeter, this is your fill port, and then over here is your vent. We are gonna be taking this vent off before we drain it to make sure it's clean and free. And as you can see on the top of mine, it's all clogged up with dirt. So I definitely wanna take out this vent and clean it before we get started on draining the fluid here. So we're gonna do that next, but I just wanna show you guys that's how you're gonna to wanna to do that. All right, so before we remove this vent, we're gonna to wanna to clean around it. That way when we take it out, we can make sure that no debris gets down inside of the gearbox. And you're gonna need an 11 millimeter to crack this thing loose. So this is the vent itself and you can see there's like a little valve in here and this is what allows the vent. So you wanna make sure that little spring ball there is moving back and forth so that it can vent out the sides here, which you can see mine are all clogged up. So I'm gonna go ahead and take a pick and make sure all this is free, open and moving. So I've got a pick out of my pick set and I'm just gonna go ahead and push on this ball here and make sure that the detent is working. And then you wanna also make sure you clear these vents on the side here. So I just poked that hole. You wanna make sure that these holes on the sides are open, otherwise it won't be venting. So I'm gonna go ahead and poke these through and I'm gonna take some brake clean. I'm gonna flush these holes out and make sure this thing's nice and clean. And we can go ahead and throw it back into the gearbox. So when you're cleaning this vent out, you should be able to shoot brake clean from one side out through the other. So you can see how I'm doing that. Go in one side and out the other, you know your vents are open. I go ahead and put the vent back in place. Okay, so now we got the vent cleaned out. We can go ahead and start draining this. You're gonna need a 12 millimeter to get these loose. Slide my cup underneath here. And just pull the plug here. 
Now, because this gear oil is so thick, it's gonna run out pretty slow. So if you want to, you can go ahead and crack open your uh, fill port here, which is a 22 millimeter. Once you open that, it'll let some air in. And that should get it to drain quite a bit faster for you. Okay, so this should be the last of it. Go ahead and remove this cup. And we can throw our drain plug back in. Go ahead and tighten it down. Okay, now we go ahead and remove our check plug, which is the upper plug here. Same exact size, 12 millimeter. Okay, now we go ahead and fill it up with our ADW 90 weight. I'm using Valvoline here. I believe the gearbox only holds like 300 milliliters, something like that from last I remember. So we'll fill it up and we'll see where we end up being here on this court so that you guys know when you go to do this yourselves, exactly how much gear lube you're gonna need. Whatever oil you use, you're definitely gonna want one with one of these little nozzle tips on them because it's definitely gonna make it a lot easier for you pouring this stuff in. You could also get a small funnel as well if that's easier for you. Okay, so now what we're looking for here is for the fluid to start coming out of this check plug here. So I'm gonna go ahead and get my little container back under here. Once you start to see fluid coming out of this check plug here, we can go ahead and put our plug back in. Just make sure you guys aren't losing the little gasket that's on these. There's a little rubber gasket on each one of these bolts. Oh, and there we go. We got fluid coming out of the hole. Now we go ahead and put our check plug back in. Okay, so now I've got it all cleaned up. We've got our plugs back in. Uh, as far as how much oil I used, I don't know how well you could see it, but we're right on the 700 milliliter mark, like right on the button. So we used about 300 milliliters, give or take. So I'd say between 280 and 300 milliliters is all you're gonna need for this gearbox. Tighten that down with our 22 millimeter. Okay, so now we've got our gearbox oil all changed. We might as well just put our belt back on, get that out of the way. That way we can get our gearbox bracket reinstalled and get on to the next step here. So go ahead and unbox this belt. And the first thing you're gonna do is stick the belt up and around the drive shaft. And then from there, you can go ahead and work around your pulleys. We're not gonna put it on all the way just yet, but we will get it started. So it basically goes around all three of these pulleys. And then the middle portion of the belt here, it goes around this middle pulley, and then it's gonna get wrapped around this way, as you can see with this loop right here. It's gonna go underneath the drive shaft, and that's gonna get connected to our idler right here. Just like that. And you're obviously gonna wanna spin it and make sure that the belt is completely in the grooves. Now that we've got the belt back in place, we can go ahead and reinstall our bracket for the gearbox. So we'll slide our bracket in place here. Go ahead and thread your two nuts on the bottom. And then we've got two silver bolts that go up top here. All right guys, so now we've got the gearbox, belt, and pulleys all taken care of. Now what we're gonna do is grease everything while we have the load off of everything. So all these pulleys, since the belt is not tight or tensioned, we've got all these pulleys that are free spinning. So we're gonna grease all eight top side fittings while there's no load on them. And then once we do that, we can go ahead and move on to the deck rollers and the deck blades. Okay, so my spindles, I usually grease these quite a bit. People always ask like, what do you normally do for how many pumps in a spindle? I usually do between 30 and 40 pumps a spindle because these spindles hold a lot of grease, a lot more than people would think. Um, so I've always done between 25 and 45, depending on how many hours I've had on it since my last greasing. And I've never had a seal blowout and I've never had um, grease come out the bottom side. Okay, so I did 35 pumps there. Okay, now we can move on to the middle spindle. I'll do another 35 pumps here. Then we've got our last spindle. We'll do another 35 on this one. Now, if you guys aren't sure of the last time you grease your spindles and you're not sure how much it'll take, a good safe number to start at is probably like 15 pumps, uh, maybe 15, 20. And what you can do as you grease it is you can just take a peek underneath the, the mower deck and um, just keep going until you start hearing it pop or until you start seeing a little bit of grease coming out the back side. So now we can do our last three bearing fittings here. Got one here on the idler pulley. This one usually doesn't take much, usually a couple pumps. So I did about four or five in that one and I could just start seeing it come out the bottom here. Okay, now these axle bearings, they usually don't take a lot at all. Um, usually if you can get a half a pump out of them, that's usually quite a bit. They just don't use that much grease. 
So that's like a half a pump there and you could already hear it coming out. And we just got one more on this end. All right, now the very last thing I'm gonna use some bearing grease for is the axle splines themselves. And I'm only using bearing grease on these splines because the bearing grease is a bit thinner than the Molly and it's not quite as tacky or sticky. So because of that, it allows us to slide a little bit better on the spines. Seems like whenever I use Molly on this, it's it's really hard to slide it back and forth because it's just so thick. I'm gonna try bearing grease this time. I think that'll work a little bit better for this. Don't pull the spline all the way out because <laughs> it can be a nightmare sometimes to get back on there as it only goes on one direction. Now one thing I didn't mention is you always want to wipe off all of your grease fittings before you start greasing. I had already done this before I started filming, so mine were already clean. But the reason you want to do that is so that you're not pushing dirt into your fittings. And um, also when you finish greasing, you want to wipe off all of your fittings as well. That way dirt doesn't stick to your fittings. All right, so now I've switched to the Molly grease so we can get these last two top side fittings. This idler here, this tensioner, this usually only takes maybe a pump or two. You can see it's already starting to come out there. That was about a pump and a half. And then same with this pivot pin here. This usually only takes about a pump, maybe a pump and a half. I can tell that's nice and stiff, so that's definitely packed. All right, guys, I've got the deck flipped over now. And as you can see, I've got the new rollers laid out, one on each corner here, so we can get started on those. And when we get all done, we'll grease them all up with the Molly grease. Okay, so to remove these, you're gonna need a 24 millimeter wrench on the front side and then you're going to need a 16 millimeter on the back side. Okay, so I've got the bolt all cleaned up. There is a little bit of wear on either side here. You can kind of see like a little raised hump in the middle, but it's not too bad. You can opt to get new bolts if you choose to. I didn't because I didn't think mine would be too bad. One thing to take note is that I noticed the old wheel has a metal sleeve on the inside of the plastic wheel and the new wheels have a plastic sleeve on the inside of the plastic wheel. So the new one's got a plastic sleeve, old one's got a metal sleeve. I'm not too sure why they changed it. I'm assuming because they were tired of people replacing the bolts. This way when the roller wears out, you just replace the wheel and you ain't got to worry about about replacing the bolt here. Okay, so now you wanna orientate the wheel so that the grease fitting is facing outward and put the bolt in towards the grease fitting. Then you can go ahead and bolt it back into place. Oh yeah, that's much better. And there's not even any grease in there yet. All right guys, now we're on the last roller here, which is the center roller. To get this off, you're gonna need a 19 millimeter. The bolt, you don't have to hold on the other side because it's like a carriage bolt, it's got a square head on it. So we can just go ahead and rip this one off. Now there is a couple spacers in here, so you don't wanna lose them. There's one. There's the roller, second spacer and then the bolt. I'm gonna go ahead and clean this bolt up like I did the rest of them. I'm gonna apply some grease and go ahead and slide on a new roller. Now you wanna make sure you don't get this too tight because you will squeeze the roller here. So you just wanna snug it up so that you don't have much side to side play with the roller. Right there, that's perfect. Just got a little bit side to side and it's all set. All right guys, so we've got all the deck rollers in place. We've got all the pins cleaned up. We've got them greased up. Uh, they definitely are much better now. You can see just how smooth they roll. All of them are nice and tight. So that's awesome because these things have been loose since the day I bought this tractor. They've been worn out and it's been one of them things that have been on my list to replace. So I think they lasted this long. I think these new ones will last even longer, especially with the improved design. Um, should be good. So now we can go ahead and move on to replacing the deck blades, which is one of the last things we got to do here. To do that, you're going to need a 30 millimeter socket. Fits on there nice and snug. I may have to put a board in here to chalk these so that they don't move on me but i'm going to use an impact gun so i may be able to just hold on to them but i don't recommend that so let's go ahead and get these things ripped off and we'll get the new ones put on
All right, guys, well, I've got the motor deck flipped back over. I put it down on the floor so that I can get the tensioner back on for the belt without pulling it off of the uh, saw horses there. So I've got it back on the floor. I've got everything else done. Last thing left is just to get that spring back on the hook right here so we can get the belt tensioned. So let's go ahead and do that now, and I'm gonna go over a couple quick things with you guys, and then uh, we'll close out this video. Okay, so we wanna make sure we've got this belt in all of the right grooves. Wanna make sure that we're in all the pulleys correctly, which it looks like we are. The best way to get this spring on is to use a spring tool. It's like a screwdriver, but it's got a little hook on it and you can just grab the end of the spring and you pull it and hook it. But unfortunately, I don't have one of those with me right now. So I'm gonna have to use a pair of vice grips and hope I don't get my fingers caught. So I would definitely recommend a spring tool because this is a pretty heavy duty spring, but I've done it with pliers before. So let's just hope they don't slip. Okay, once you got the spring in place, you can go ahead and roll the belt. Just make sure it rolls nice and smoothly. It shouldn't be binding at all. It should be nice and smooth. Once you know you've got that nice and smooth, you know your belt's on correctly, and you should be all set. All right, guys, so that's the finished product of doing your maintenance on a Kubota BX mower deck. Uh, this is a 60-inch deck, if I didn't mention it before, uh, but the maintenance is exactly the same for the 50-inch deck. The only main difference is you guys with the 50-inch decks will not have a grease fitting right here because the 50-inch deck does not need a pivot point because it is shorter, so it does not have this grease fitting here. But all other maintenance that we did today is going to be identical with the 50-inch mower deck. As far as the old parts, I've got them all over here. Here's my old belt, which I'll keep as a spare. Here's my old blades. As you can see, they were really getting pretty thin. I ground them and sharpened them so many times over the years, and they were the original blades, which they really don't look too bad for all the stumps and roots and saplings I've mowed over. They certainly don't look too bad. Here are the original rollers. As you can see, a lot of them are really wallowed out. You can see just how big these holes are. They're wallowed out pretty bad. One of them, when I pull it apart, the bushing on the inside actually fell right out. So, I mean, these things were smoked. Um, this center one here wasn't too bad, but I figured I'd replace it anyway if I'm replacing the rest. Um, kind of stupid not to replace the last one. Um, as far as the gear oil in the gearbox, this is what it looks like. It was getting pretty dark. It wasn't terrible yet, but it was definitely getting pretty dark. Kind of has like a light brownish metallic color to it. Wasn't terrible, but I'm uh, glad to get it out of there. It's been a couple of years since I've done that. And like I said, Kubota recommends every 150 hours. As far as for the seals on the gearbox itself, um, those they recommend doing once every couple of years, if I didn't mention that already. So yeah, that's pretty much it. That's how you do the maintenance at a Kubota BX mower deck. Stay tuned because pretty soon when the weather warms up a little bit, I plan on doing my hydrostatic oil change. You can see here, I've got a two and a half gallon container with a couple of quarts and the hydraulic filter. So pretty soon once things warm up and I can get outside and do it, I will do it because doing it in here is just gonna be way too hard. I actually have not done the hydrostatic transmission fluid since I started my YouTube channel. So it's been quite a while and every single job you can see on my entire channel, every single time I worked that tractor hard and almost broke it and everything else, that was all in the same fluid and the same filter. So that's an incredible amount of work that this uh, oil and filter has been through if you go back through and see those videos. so. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, stay tuned. Like I said, we'll be doing the hydrostatic transmission fluid soon. Hopefully you guys learned something in this video. Hopefully it helps a bunch of people out. I know there's a lot of new BX owners each and every day. So a lot of you guys might already know how to do all this stuff, but there is a lot of new owners that don't know how to. So uh, hopefully it helps them out and hope you guys enjoyed the video. Like I said, stay tuned for the next one. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Don't forget to comment, like, subscribe, and as always, we'll see you guys in the next one.